first time I ever saw Child's Play, I was about seven or eight, and I sat through the entire movie from start to finish with the TV completely muted. Not once did I unmute it. Talk about a strange way to experience a movie for the first time. Child's Play is where it all began, with serial killer Charles Lee Ray being chased down by a lone detective in the rainy, dark streets of Chicago. Charles runs into a toy store after being mortally wounded and transfers his soul into the body of a good guy doll, and thus, the long legacy of Chucky was born. Good guys say three different sentences. We even turn our heads and blink our eyes when you talk to us. Man, screw the Chucky doll. Could you imagine if that thing was running around? <sighs> Before we get into talking about Chucky himself, let's talk about Andy Barkley, played by Alex Vincent. Today is little Andy's sixth birthday, and I can't think of a worse way to spend your cake day than having your aunt get her face smashed in and falling out a window, but we'll get to that. When it comes to child actors, it's either hit or miss, and let's face it, it's typically miss. I mean, you have rare cases where it's an E.T. or Stranger Things sort of situation where the kids are great, but usually we end up with stuff like Troll 2 and The Last Airbender. Thank God, in the case of Child's Play, a movie where 70% of the plot rides on the acting chops of a six-year-old kid, Alex nails it out of the park. But Chucky is here! Then he's going to kill me! <laughs> He was one hell of a talented little kid. He could pull out your heartstrings, and he was adorable, which is great when he switches to killer mode. We're friends to the end, remember? This is the end, friend. I mean, everybody else does good jobs too, but let's face it, most of us always remember Andy and Chucky. Child's Play was the first time Brad Dorif would take on the reins of Chucky and bring the little psychopath to life. It's a little strange going back to this one, thinking about how people in the audience seeing this at the theater at the time had no idea that not only would Chucky become a franchise that is still going, but that Brad Dorif would become a horror icon as a direct result of this movie. You can tell right from the beginning that Brad was born for this role. You just can't have Chucky without the voice of Dorif. His voice is so iconic that even in his other great roles like Doc and Deadwood, which is an amazing show by the way, I still only hear Chucky. You mean I have to live out the rest of my life in this body? No fucking way! You got me into this, you get me out! The special effects work on the Chucky doll itself is top notch. Seriously, considering this movie came out in 1988, it's completely baffling to me that the later Chucky dolls, specifically 3, Curse, and Cult of Chucky, look so stupid in comparison. Why? You'd think with more advanced technology and a bigger budget, you can only make him look better, but nope. His appearance in this is still one of the best even down to his facial movements, which were done apparently after Brad had done all his voice work so that they could match the mouth to Brad's. Chucky was brought to life using a combination of animatronics, little people in costume, puppetry, and even Alex Vincent's little sister. Yes, in this shot, that is actually a little girl. The first act of this movie does tend to be on the slow side, which can be a little rough to sit through if you're used to the later Chucky movies. I mean, we want to see Chucky throwing out his wisecracking jackass remarks and killing people, but in this they use a lot of build-up. I have a slight issue with this because throughout almost the first hour of this movie, they try to toy with us and make us question whether Chucky is actually alive or if Andy just woke up on his birthday and went psycho. But they already show Chucky moving on his own long before the first kill even happens. It would have been nice to actually keep us wondering so that when Chucky finally does come to life, we could be genuinely shocked. But due to this, and you know, Chucky being right on the poster, it's obvious to anyone with a working brain that Andy isn't doing anything. Apparently, one of the original concepts for this movie would have made the good guy dolls have lifelike blood and latex skin, so that if kids accidentally ripped the dolls, they could go buy good guy brand band-aids. Rather than Chucky being born by the transferring of Charles Lee Ray's soul, he would have come to life by Andy mixing his own blood with Chucky's. So, essentially, Andy was an emo kid in that version. I want to see that version. Really, I do. While Child's Play isn't my personal favorite of the series, it's definitely one of the best. It introduced the world to Alex Vincent and probably contributed directly to making Brad Dorf a household name. Sure, he was great and one flew over the cuckoo's nest and he was in Dune, but to most of us, he will always be Chucky.
It's a bit slow and can be a little difficult in the beginning if you're one of those people that was introduced to Chucky in the later movies where every other line of his is a joke or a smart-ass remark. I mean, there are a couple in here, like this classic gem. Ugly doll. Fuck you. But, if you're a horror fan, you owe it to yourself to see Child's Play if you haven't. And I mean, come on, who really hasn't? It's Chucky, for God's sake. Chucky wanna play? Yeah, but Chucky's back. Whereas the original Child's Play had an almost indie slash low budget feel to it, Child's Play 2 feels like a film. Everything has been cranked up this time around, including the cinematography, the kills, the special effects on Chucky himself, hell, even the music. Everything in this movie just says, yes, we had a higher budget this time. Interestingly, this movie and all future installments of the series were released by Universal, yet the original was released by United Artists. The reason for this is because apparently United Artists was being bought out by a company called Quintex that wanted to go in a more family-friendly direction. Kinda like YouTube, ha! <laughs> in the end, Universal and Chucky are still going strong, and Quintex has gone defunct and is no longer a thing. What does that tell ya? So after Chucky was burnt, had his head shot off, and his heart blown out the back of his spine, the company responsible for creating the good guy dolls decides to rebuild them from scratch. I guess in an effort to prove there isn't anything wrong with the dolls or something. This was obviously a bad idea, because now Chucky suddenly has the special ability to manipulate machinery and electrocutes a guy. I don't know what's up with that, but I guess this series does involve a lot of voodoo, so I guess it isn't beyond the realm of possibility. I mean, I'm questioning a movie about a killer doll, whatever. Meanwhile, Andy Barkley, once again played by Alex Vincent, has been taken away from his mother and put into foster care. We don't really know what happened to Andy's mom, but apparently there was a scene in here that was cut that was supposed to show the whole courtroom hearing and whatnot. I really wish they had kept that in. This time around, Chucky was an established horror icon already, so they know exactly what we wanted, and they deliver. Within the first 20 minutes, Chucky is back up and talking, killing, and spouting his classic smartass remarks, once again voiced by the brilliant Brad Dorff. Chucky really is the star of these movies, so thank God the writer gave Chucky a lot more dialogue. I would have been pissed if they tried to do the whole mysterious, is it Andy or Chucky bullshit again. Well, I mean, they kind of do, but they make us very aware that Chucky is the one doing it. Most of the characters are just idiots. Speaking of Alex Vincent, I don't think his acting in this one is as good as it was in the original movie. But I don't really contribute that to Alex's lack of talent, because I know the kid was talented. I think it's just that the writer didn't really give Andy Barkley a whole lot of dialogue this time around. Most of the time, Andy is just standing around looking cold and empty. But hey, I guess you would be too if your birthday present got up and tried to murder you. So maybe it's intentional. The animatronics on Chucky are really good now. We get a lot more shots of Chucky's facial expression, some wide frame shots of him walking. He's just altogether a much more animated character. Especially in shots like this when he beats Miss Kettlewell to death with a meter stick. Good stuff. I'm going to be getting into a little spoiler territory here, so if you haven't seen this movie for some ungodly reason, skip this and reevaluate your life. Come on, you haven't seen Child's Play 2? What the hell? The ending act of Child's Play 2 in The Good Guy Factory is out fucking standing. Seriously, it's probably the best finale any of these movies have ever gotten. Chucky gets messed up, man. He gets his hand ripped off, gets his ball stapled to a board, gets melted in half, gets covered in burning liquid latex. Holy shit, it's sick, and I love it. <gasps> the Child's Play series has had high and low points for sure, but Child's Play 2 is definitely a high point. This was the movie that really cemented Chucky as a true horror icon to me. The first one is a classic, obviously, but this felt like one of the definitive Chucky experiences, but again, not my favorite in the franchise. That review is still coming. <laughs> Dirt, Tommy. <laughs> Sometimes, movie production studios make some really stupid fucking decisions, even those as big as Universal Studios. Before Child's Play 2 was even released, Universal was on Don Mancini's ass about getting the third movie written. 
because of this, Child's Play 3 was released not even a year after Child's Play 2 hit theaters. In fact, there was only a nine-month gap between the two. And because Mancini decided to make the third movie take place eight years after Child's Play 2 for some reason, even though the damn movie came out less than a year after, obviously we weren't going to be seeing Alex Vincent come back. So this time, Andy Barkley, now 16 years old, is played by Justin Whalen, who hasn't really been in anything worth mentioning ever since. Anyway, eight years after Child's Play 2, the money-hungry company that created the Good Guy dolls decides to restart production on the doll. Is nobody watching this? How do you not see all the blood pouring out of a piece of melted latex? I've always loved this opening sequence. There's just something about it that's awesome. I don't know, it's probably the best part of the movie, honestly. Meanwhile, Andy is now the newest member of a military academy where his most pressing threats are stuff like this barber who has a really terrifyingly creepy hair fetish. Oh hey, is that kid rockin' an Atari Lynx? Yeah, dude! As you can probably expect, Chucky is revived, somehow packages himself up in a box, how he managed to do that is beyond me, and ships himself off to the military school. But this time, it isn't Andy he's after, it's the Atari Lynx kid named Tyler. Just like in Child's Play 2, the creators knew we were here for Chucky, so he shows up literally within the first 10 minutes, which is good, but uh, I really, really don't like how Chucky looks in this one. He has rosy red cheeks and looks like a fat pumpkin patch kid. Not even pumpkin patch, he could even pass as a garbage pail kid. Anybody remember those? There's literally nothing intimidating about this version of Chucky at all, besides his voice, because, I mean, Brad Dorff is a god. The only time he looks at all menacing is after half his face is cut off. His facial animations are fine, but a definite downgrade from how he looked in 2. He just felt far more alive in the last two movies. Since Alex Vincent doesn't come back to play Andy, there isn't really anything connecting this movie to the last one besides Chucky himself. It feels off, like a black sheep in comparison to the other Child's Play movies. It's not without its good moments though. There's a great scene where Chucky's about to kill a member of the school, but the guy has a heart attack before Chucky can even touch him. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. And spoilers ahead, the ending is probably one of the best ways Chucky has ever been killed off. I mean, falling into a giant fan, that shit's awesome. Unfortunately, aside from Andy and maybe De Silva, none of the characters are memorable or interesting in the least. I get it, Chucky is the star, but come on. Because without characters we give a shit about, moments like this are about as emotional as watching a leaf blow away after a dog farts. Speaking of dog farts, one thing I find really stupid is that, again, spoilers, the military school goes into the woods to do a war game with paintball rifles, but Chucky switches out the ammo on the red team's rifles with real bullets. Yet, after the first red team shoots, everyone else on the red team shoots as well. Paintballs sound nothing, nothing like a real rifle. How fucking stupid do you have to be to not notice the difference? Isn't that the kind of thing they teach at, you know, a military academy? Child's Play 3 is alright, at best. It's not as bad as some of the later Chucky movies, but it's nowhere near as good as the original two. It could have been had those corporate execs over at Universal Studios given Mancini a bit more time to work on it, or maybe it was always destined to be mediocre, who knows. Not only does Mancini consider this to be the worst Chucky movie, but even Chucky himself, Brad Dorff, has said he doesn't like this one. I don't agree that it's the worst, but that still speaks volumes. You know what they say. You just can't keep a good guy down. Child's Play 3 wasn't very good and didn't do too well at the box office. I guess that's just what happens when you try to forcefully shit out a sequel less than a year after the previous movie. As a result, it wasn't until 1998, seven years after Child's Play 3, that Chucky came back. And holy damn was it ever a comeback. 
This is going to be a spoiler heavy review, so maybe skip this if you haven't seen Bride yet. The movie begins with a police officer going into an evidence room which is a literal treasure trove of easter eggs. Jason's hockey mask, Freddy Krueger's claw, Michael Myers' mask, and Leatherface's chainsaw. And apparently people have said they can see one of the dolls from the Puppet Master movies in here too, but I can't see shit. Maybe I'm just blind. The officer is actually retrieving the demolished remains of Chucky after he was dropped into the big ass fan in Child's Play 3. But who would bribe a cop into stealing the remains of Chucky? Could it be the bride of Chucky, perhaps? Yes, this is Tiffany, played by Jennifer Tilly, who is gorgeous to look at, especially in this movie, but her voice is just... It's like listening to a horse get kicked in the nuts. Well, hello, Dolly. Anyway, Tiffany stitches Chucky back together in what is essentially a giant nod to Frankenstein, and holy crap does he ever look badass. There's a reason this version of Chucky is the version that everyone seems to remember, and it's obvious why. When Chucky finally comes back to life, it's great. It ain't the size that counts, asshole. It's what you do with it. We've been waiting seven years for this moment, and it does not disappoint. Interesting fact, this Damien guy was played by Alexis Arquette, and is actually David Arquette's brother. Yeah, David Arquette from Scream. In 2004, Alexis transitioned into a woman, and later passed away from HIV in 2006. I had no idea about this, because Bride of Chucky is the only role I've ever seen him in, and I grew up watching this movie so many times that it was just strange to hear, you know? Oh, and I'm saying he, because he started identifying as a man shortly before his death, so... Anyway, when Chucky kills Tiffany and transfers her soul into the doll of a bride, it's a huge reference to the bride of Frankenstein. Hell, it's even playing on the TV and is juxtaposed into her death, and given the fact that the movie is called Bride of Chucky and Chucky is stitched together with other doll parts, it's very clear that Frankenstein was a huge influence on this one. My dick is so confused right now. The two main protagonists in this movie are Jesse, played by Nick Stabile, and Jade, played by Katherine Heigl. Honestly, they are likable enough people, mainly because they're just average Joes thrown into Chucky's road trip of terror for no other reason than them wanting to be together. But Jade's uncle, played by the late John Ritter, is an absolute dickhead and for some reason won't let her see Jesse, but they never really explain why. Chucky doesn't spend as much time wandering around like he did in Child's Play 2, but the facial movements of not only him, but the Tiffany doll as well, are absolutely fantastic. And this time, they know damn well from the very beginning that Chucky was going to be the main star, since we didn't have Andy this time around. So they doubled down on his personality, and thank God Brad Dorff came back for this, because no other voice will ever work as Chucky. Chucky is a complete asshole prick in this one, always smack-talking Tiffany, and just in general being a dick, and you absolutely love him for it. You mean, you weren't gonna ask me to marry you? What are you, fucking nuts? <laughs> you thought? <laughs> you just... Uh, uh. Even his taste in music is awesome. Seriously, this movie had one of the best soundtracks of the 90s with stuff like White Zombie, Rob Zombie, Slayer, Stabbing Westward. God, it was good shit. As a matter of fact, I've still got the original CD of the soundtrack I bought when I was six. Yes, I saw this when I was six. The kills are a lot more uh, imaginative in this one. In the first three movies, most of the kills were just Chucky stabbing or choking someone out, with the exception of poor Miss Kettlewell. But this time, we have John Ritter getting a ton of nails in his face in a reference to Hellraiser and Pinhead that I didn't get as a kid. A guy getting literally eviscerated by a truck, glass slicing people up, among others. It's over the top, for sure, but I can't deny that it's fun. I absolutely love this movie. As a matter of fact, it's one of my top 10 movies of all time. But, this is a review, so I have to point out some of the stuff that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, what the hell is up with the heart of Dambala? Chucky says he needs it to transfer his soul into another body, but where the hell was it during the last three movies? Before this, all he had to do was recite the whole voodoo spell and it was fine. Is it because he didn't need it only if he wasn't transferring his soul into Andy? It's not like he has a new body, Tiffany just stitched it together. 
And if he knew about the amulet, why would he go through all the insane hell he went through trying to get into Andy's body rather than just going to his real corpse to get the amulet? Am I overthinking this? Probably. Also, the sex scene is stupid. Beyond stupid. Everyone says Team America was the first doll-on-doll -doll banging scene in movies. Hell nah, Chucky did it first. Plus, it was the catalyst that brought about Seed of Chucky and just... Ugh. We'll get into that next. And Chucky's death in this one is a huge step down from his deaths in the previous movies. I mean, how do you top getting shredded up in a fan or having your head blown up by compressed air? Shooting him. Oh. Bride of Chucky is my favorite Chucky movie for various reasons, but mainly nostalgia. It's far from a perfect movie if you're comparing it to classics, but by god, it was one of the best 90s movies ever to me. I love 1 and 2, but of all the Chucky movies I'd recommend to someone who has never seen a Chucky movie before, this is the one I'd tell them to see. Bride just sums up beautifully why I love this franchise and this character. Chucky's personality is given room to shine. The additional dynamic of adding Tiffany to the mix just aided that. And while it had comedy, it didn't fall into shit parody territory like Seed does. Bride of Chucky is one of my favorite movies of all time for reasons I already explained in my review of it, so you could imagine my complete excitement when I heard a sequel was on its way. To me, Bride of Chucky was the perfect balance of horror and comedy. All they had to do was keep the same momentum going for Seed. And then, on a copy of the 2004 Dawn of the Dead remake, I got my first taste of what I thought was gonna come, with a teaser trailer that very, very drastically differed in tone from what Seed of Chucky actually ended up being. Oh, what could have been. So, Seed of Chucky immediately starts with really bad CGI sperm swimming to an egg. So, right off the bat, you know what kind of thing they're going for here. The opening first person sequence was actually promising, and was the kind of tone I would have hoped for, but it quickly spirals down when you get introduced to this ugly dumpster fire fuck. Yep, this is Chucky's kid Glenn. Oh, and he's voiced by Billy Boyd from Lord of the Rings. Wrap your minds around that shit. Anyway, Glenn thinks that because he has a birthmark on his wrist that says Made in Japan, that his parents are of Japanese ancestry, even though he's ginger and British. All nightmares, filled with hate and blood and guts. I'm not like that at all. Speaking of, why the hell is he British anyway? Chucky and Tiffany aren't. Also, are we just gonna forget that Chucky and Tiffany tried to murder the hell out of each other in Bride of Chucky? But now, after waking up, they just seem fine with it. You can't tell me this ignores that movie, because A, Glenn is here, B, they have the heart of Dambala, C, Chucky's all stitched up, and D, Tiffany actually calls the widow of the cop she killed at the beginning of Bride, so... Jennifer Tilly returns as the voice of Tiffany, but also plays herself, as in a meta version of Jennifer Tilly that loves to be a slut, talk about finger-banging Gina Gershon and Bound, and filling her face with chocolate bars. Honestly, one of the more enjoyable parts of the movie is how much self-deprecating humor Jennifer throws at herself. And of course, Brad Dorff is back again as Chucky, and thank Christ for that, because it's one of the very few things that kind of makes this movie savable. All his lines are jokes or smart-ass one-liners, which is what we want, but a lot of them are dated pop culture references. As a matter of fact, the whole movie consists of nothing but dated pop culture references and meta-humor. That just doesn't work. From a scene where Chucky literally drives Britney Spears off the road and kills her, to a central character being played by rapper Redman. Who the hell is Redman? I mean, I'm sure he was a big deal in 2004? I have no idea. It's just a really dated movie. It feels like it's trying to skirt the line between a comedy and a parody. It doesn't even give a damn about the horror aspect of it anymore. And the jokes that aren't shots at pop culture are stupid shit like Chucky jerking off to a Fangoria magazine so they can use a turkey baster to pump Jennifer Tilly full of Chucky goo. Yeah, I wish I was making that up. Here, of all the attempts at humor in this movie, this is the one single scene that got a chuckle out of me. Who the hell are you? Shit face. It's not all bad. Some of the kills are pretty horrific, like when John Waters gets a bunch of acid dumped on his face. Oh, and there's a nice reference to The Shining in there, even though that's, like, the easiest movie you could reference. Uh, I can't think of a thing to say. Fuck it. Seed of Chucky just missed the mark entirely. 
It was a way out of character movie that tried way too hard to be a hip, comedic parody of horror but ended up failing on almost every single mark. Brad Dorif is awesome as always because he's Brad Dorif. And even Tiffany is great again even though her doll looks off. Some of the jokes poking fun at Jennifer Tilly are entertaining, but most of it is clouded by the inclusion of Glenn, the stupid jokes, stupid pop culture references, worse looking doll effects than Bride, and just in general, a lack of focus. To say Seed of Chucky is my least favorite in the franchise would be an understatement. As a matter of fact, re-watching this for the review was only the second time since 2004 that I've actually sat through this from start to finish. And you know when you spend more time plucking out your ball hairs than paying attention to a movie that something is horribly wrong. That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> you like that? That's some top-notch humor right there. I could write the next Chucky movie. Fuck. Play the movie. I want you to smile.